Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This video, we're talking about something super special. We're gonna be talking about arrow functions. Arrow functions and bow functions. <laughs> I'm playing guys. We're gonna save the bow functions for another video. So, just arrows today. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? Dev Mountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through Dev Mountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. All right, so what in the world is an arrow function? It's ba- oh crap. It's basically a new way to create a function. And it looks a little something like this. All right, so here we have opening and closing parentheses, and then we have an equal sign and a, uh, oops, less than alligators, okay. Greater than sign, and then an expression. So this is one variation. This is the concept video in the upcoming video. We're gonna be going over some examples. So you guys know how I like to pair things. So make sure you watch both parts. So. The equivalent for this in a function declaration would be something like this. And this is pretty close. So pretty much a lot of the stuff stays the same. The parentheses is where the parameters go. Dang it, drop my chalk. The expression is what we are returning. So it might be something like five plus five or some calculated value or something like that. Any expression can be returned here. In this situation, we do not use the return keyword. We just put the expression. So you uh, have to type less, which is a burden. And you can also notice that there's no curly braces and we don't have to have the function keyword. So overall, it's just a lot less typing, very concise. Now there are a couple variations. For example, if you want to have a parameter, for example, x. And then in this situation, what we could do is let's just say we want to return x squared. Bless your soul. So it might look something like this. Now there is one thing you need to also add here. So right now we can reference this function by using x, which is the name of the function here. Let's give it a better name. Let's call it func. Well, if we wanted to reference this one, well, we actually need to assign it to a variable. So it might look like this, like so. And then we invoke it the same way we would invoke any other function and we would pass in some number, such as five. That's going to give us the value 25, which we could then console log or pass into another function or whatever. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the syntax, specifically these parentheses. They're actually optional when you have one parameter. So we can actually get rid of this. And then all we have is x, fat arrow, x times x. They are required when you have zero or two or more parameters. So if there's one, they're optional. Another thing, inside of here, you could put a lot of statements, right? You can make a really complex function, but this is just an expression. We can't put more than pretty much anything there. So if you wanna do more statements inside of the function, you actually need to make a function body using curly braces, and that's totally fine. In this situation, you would need to use the return keyword to return something. So it would look like this. Beautiful handwriting, I know. So the only thing we did is we added the curly braces and put a return, but now we can have multiple statements. So before this statement, we could have another statement with a semicolon and all kinds of different statements. Now, what is special about arrow functions? We're gonna get into this in a lot of detail in the upcoming videos, but the thing that's special about arrow functions is the keyword this. So with normal functions, this changes based on how you call the function. With arrow functions, the value of this is always going to be the same. And it's determined by where the function is created rather than how the function is called. So back in my in-person video about this, I was complaining how with normal functions, they're a little bit unpredictable because this can change. Well, arrow functions fixes that problem because the value of this is always going to be the same. There's a couple of things you gotta be careful of with that and make sure you get the right value of this but we're gonna be talking about all of that. So hopefully this video gave you a pretty good introduction to the arrow function, and uh, be sure to check out the next video because we're gonna be uh, doing some code. So yeah, peace out, woo! Okay, I didn't hit you, that was, that was close. I threw the arrow at the camera.
I missed on purpose though. It wasn't even close.